I sent your wife Sharon yeah. a text message and said, let me know ahead of time if something is off limits. So, you know, I love both and I don't like any of my passengers yeah. to feel uncomfortable. And she said, nothing is off limits. In fact, I think you should start by talking about Mike's old girlfriends. And I sure, thought, oh. I didn't do that. Yeah. I, I didn't have any. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, you've been dating since seventh grade. Yeah, you don't, yeah. Can you even think of another well, you know, girl we that you dated apart, besides Sharon? We were apart uh, in, um, you know, I went to college and Sharon was finishing her senior year. So we dated other people then. And then she went down to McMurray College down in Abilene, Texas. And I stayed up at Northwestern in Oklahoma. So, yeah, there's a. Where he dated Sharon Beckner, I might add, <laughs> after he ate Connie Reimer's brownies. You're so, you're so stupid. It's not, it, it sounds like you, in the end, ended up making better brownies, though. No, Connie Reimer's were the best brownies hey. I ever had. Uh oh. <laughs> they were good, but I didn't date her. Listen, I want. How many years have you been married now? Too, too many. 46? 46 in December. Yeah. Okay, well, I want it to be 47 still <laughs> after this car ride. Yeah. We got a chance. Let go here. Let go sounds so much better than fire, doesn't it? You were it's let go I, then. Oh, no, I thought I was let go. That's, I was still a coach then. What took you a long right. time to get I say the same right. thing yeah. because I said to, when I was losing my job, I said to someone, I can't believe I'm getting fired. And the person who was firing me said, well, you're not really getting fired. Yeah. We're just letting you go. Letting you go. I was like, renewing your contract. Okay. That's a good way, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Was that a shock to you when that happened? When I got let go as a manager? Yeah, because uh, you were doing so great. You know, no, not really, because uh, just the way things had progressed, or, you know, the, 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 from the nine years that I managed. So no, it didn't. It didn't surprise me, especially the way we got beat in the in the divisional series by Boston. We were up two games to none, and ended up losing the next three, and, and got to go home. So I I wasn't shocked. I probably was the last person that that. Uh, that realized that something might happen. Sharon, Sharon tells me she said, "All right, I knew." Yeah, you I knew did know, before. Sharon? Like, I did thought, you? I thought before the playoffs started that year that there was a chance if we didn't do well. That can you see? I can. I, I can. <laughs> How do they deliver that kind of news in um, Major League Baseball? Is like it come probably, right out with it? Probably pretty much the way it's done everywhere. I mean, they're pretty upfront with it. They don't say we're you're fired. Um, you know, they tell you they appreciate the job that you did and that they feel like that the ball club needed a new voice. So I I didn't have a problem with that at all. I didn't like it, but I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, John and Dan O'Dowd and Mark Shapiro were in the office and John did all the talking and and it was very amicable. Um, the only thing that was ever said that really, really ticked me off was... Uh, was uh, that was said that uh, we needed someone to take the club to the next level. Mm. And I don't know how you think I mean, we were the World Series twice in five years. I don't know how you go to the next level. So <laughs> that really right. bothered me. But uh, but you know it was it was uh, it wasn't shocking. It wasn't surprise. You know, it wasn't surprising. It was it was what it was. Two I things. I was a happy camper. Two things I really remember about that is Mike calling and saying. I answered the phone. I said, you got fired, didn't you? And he said, they told me they wouldn't say anything until, um, you know, until I had a chance to tell my family. And I said, well, I haven't heard it from anybody. I just know it doesn't take long to say you're fired. It takes a long time to say what we're going to do next year. And uh, he said, I'm not going to come home right now. I'm, I'm gonna, I want to drive around a while and just collect my thoughts because I don't want to say something in a 20-minute interview that's going to ruin a 20-year reputation because we'd been with the Indians for 20 years. You're so smart. And I thought it was really neat. And I remember him asking me if I could uh, call the kids and let them know. And, and he said, and Sharon, will you call my parents? I just need... And that's when he got choked up. He said, I, I just can't tell my folks I just got fired. It takes a while for that to sink right. in, though. I mean, when you look at it, some of the best and the best of the best in the world end up losing yeah. their jobs. I mean, really Steve Jobs was fired from his own company, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Professionally, he well, you ended know, in up baseball, doing well. they say you, you know, they say you're hired to be fired. And uh, of course, you know, you, you, when you take the job, you say, "Well, that won't happen to me." You know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have this job until I'm tired of it and, and uh, not productive, and then I'll just, I'll resign. But uh, it is true that you're hired to be fired, and, and it just, it, I think the key to 
how good you are is how long you last, but eventually um, it will happen. You know, this has been an exciting year because the Indians are now in the playoffs and number one in their division, but the team truly, I mean, when you flash back to John Hart saying to you, we want to take the team to the next level, really never were at the same level. I mean, in 2007, had that chance, right? Right. Um, But I feel like when people think of the Cleveland Indians, up until now with all the excitement going on, you think of the the, the 95 year, mm-hmm. the 97 year. You had this unbelievable team of just like superstars. Like even Jim Tomey, did you have him at the toward the bottom of the lineup, or where well, did he? You bat? know, I have two lineups <laughs> in my in my down in our basement where I keep all of the our junk. Mm-hmm. Um, and the lineups. One, I can't remember the dates, but one was one day, then the other was the next day. And there those big working lineups, you know. The, mm-hmm. And uh, I, and, and one of them I've got Jim Tomey hitting eight and Manny Ramirez hitting nine. And the other one the next day I have Ramirez hitting eight and Tomey hitting nine. So, uh, yeah, we had a good ball club. And, you know, I, and I always I always believed, still do, that, you know, if you if you can do it, that uh, that you really need to ease young players into, you know, the, the lineup in the everyday uh, back and forth that goes on um, because the game at the big league level is really fast. I mean, it's really, it's uh, it, it, it's faster than what anybody is used to playing, and and you need a time to be able to adjust and kind of accommodate yourself and and really slow the game back down to where you can where you can deal with it. And and so, uh, you know, I think I took a little bit of heat at times uh, from the press for. Or uh, you know, uh, platoon and Jim, to- you know, told me or hitting both those guys as well as I did. But you know, it's one of those things. It's something I believed in. I believe in it. And if I had to do it again, I'd, I'd do it. But it is comical to look up there and see that you you have you know two guys that should be in the Hall of Fame hitting eight and nine in your lineup. Who was the best player that ever played for you? Oh God! Wow, that's a good question. I had a lot, a lot of really <laughs> good players. Um, the best that ever played for me, day in and day out, I'm going to take consistency with that, day in and day out was probably, golly, <laughs> probably Sandy Alomar. Yeah? Andy, Sandy, you knew what you were going to get with Sandy every day. And I think that's what any manager, you know, wants out of his players. Just, you know, give me 100% of what you've got that day and, and, and do it every day. And, and Sandy, you know, Sandy didn't play it well all the time. But Sandy always showed up, played hard, and and more times than not, he was he, you know he did an awfully good job. So, you know, I Sandy, I could include a lot of Adrian Beltre who played for me in Seattle was was uh, and he'll be you know he should be in the Hall of Fame now. He's, he's you know starring in Texas, a uh, uh, guy that I that that I thoroughly enjoyed playing uh, you know managing was uh, Jeff Conine, um, you know uh, Omar. Kenny, you just go, it just goes on and, go, and on and yeah, on, right? On. There's, there's really no end to the list. Uh, there's some that I didn't like at all, but I'm sure, you know, Earl Weaver said one time, he said that his major job as a manager of Baltimore was to keep the 13 players that hated him away from the 12 players who were totally indifferent. <laughs> so, I mean, so, so, you know, you can't please all people all the time, and I'm sure I know there were players that absolutely thought I was the worst manager in the world. And, Anybody with the Indians? Anybody on those great teams? Yeah, I think there's probably think? a couple. Yeah, probably at least at least a few. Who you, no, you're not, not sending any, Christmas cards to? Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not getting any. Oh. <laughs> I used to boo from the stand sometimes so people didn't know I was with him. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let me ask both of you this. So back in those 95 years, I mean, the, the Indians, or at the time, the Jake, they were setting a record of consecutive sold-out games. I remember being a young college kid. I just wanted to be in the atmosphere. So if I didn't have a ticket to the game, I still had all my Indians gear, and I'd just go down to, I think it was like Pete and Dewey's or one of the local bars, just to be there and take in the atmosphere. So fast forward to today, I mean, we have a great team in the playoffs, and they weren't selling out every game. What do you think the difference is between then and now, and why are... Why is that ballpark not packed when you have exciting baseball? Yeah. Well, it's still a little, it is. It's, it's frustrating to, to to 
to see how this team plays. I mean, they're fun to watch, and how hard they play, and how much they care, and, and, and not people, you know, people not coming to the ballpark, filling the place up. That's that's that is frustrating. It's irritating. But but I the difference between the nineties, the ninety five team, ninety four, ninety five, ninety six teams, and, and this team is, is if you'll remember, we didn't start selling out to probably halfway through, I believe, the ninety five season. So we had an entire season to, to prove to people that we were who we thought we were. Mm-hmm. And and it still took, you know, half a year of the ninety five uh, season for that to start kicking in. I believe that my memory's right. Um, but uh um, so I think you know, I think a lot of it is a little bit like this um, that the people are still trying to believe and buy into to what's going on, and um, and I think it's still you know I think it'll, it, I think it'll still happen. Have we really sell out three four hundred times in a row like like we did back in the nineties? But that's you know even Boston doesn't do that anymore. So I think that, uh, that, that that's probably a little unrealistic to. to to believe, but to hope for, it's it's certainly something we all hope for. But it's a they're a fun team to watch, and um, you know my favorite team player on that team on this team is Jason Kittens because I think he embodies everything this team is about. Um, you know he's uh, he's solid, he's steady, he's consistent, uh, he plays hard. He's he, you know he's he, he's a team leader. He does all those little things that you want to see a good established star be. He's not selfish. He's just it, he just everything about him. I really do like, and I you know I spent some time in conversation with with uh, with Jason uh, uh, from spring training all the way through the year. Not much through the year, maybe once or twice, maybe three times. But but it, I've always come away uh, from those conversations with him feeling really good about where he is and where the ball club's going. When you watch the team now, do you watch it like a manager or do you watch it like a fan? Oh, I you know I. Uh, a little bit of both. I, you know, I, I watch it more as a fan now than I did probably up until about three years ago, two years ago. Um, you know, I, I watched it as a manager then. And, and like everybody else, you know, you sit there and second guess what the manager's going to do. I mean, there's ten different ways to get a job done, and the manager's job is to pick one of the ones that'll work. Um, and so, you know, I would sit there and say, why is he doing this? Why did he do that? I think it's just that that's a, a part, you know, of the game. I think it's a part of the mystique of the game. Uh, but uh, now I watch it as a fan. I, I was uh, when uh, we had the back-to-back home runs that went to come from behind to win. Yeah. And then when when uh, the second one, when uh, Naquin hit that ball off the right center field wall, and, started, and and he was running. After it was all said and done, Sharon said, "Mike, you really got to watch your language around these kids. You had to, <laughs> the grandkids." I said, "What do you mean?" I mean he, he said, you were standing up yelling, go, you son of a bitch, go, at the top of my lungs. I didn't realize I was doing that. But, you know, um, as a manager, I would have done that. You would that. have? Oh, did yeah. you, like, really, you oh, scream yeah. and cheer oh, and yell yeah. things? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I hear, I've heard um, players say throughout, from when I played, the man, coach and managed that, that, you know, how they, they don't hear the fans. They don't, you know, somebody's heckling. They don't hear that. Kind of, and and, and that's, that's a load of bull. They hear it. You know, they hear somebody drop a nickel in the, you know, top row of the, of the, you know, upper deck. Um, a, large crowds come into our ballpark, and I don't know if it's the way our ballpark's built or whatever it was, but I know that when, when, when that place is full and you walk out on the field, because we saw it day in and day out in the 90s, there's a, there's a buzz going on. I mean, it's, it's not, it's, there's like a little bit of electricity in the air. I mean, there's something that's... That's there that that, uh, that that gets you going and gets your motor going and and uh, and I watched it a number of times. Uh, you know our, our fans get revved up and, and just throw all that energy out to out to the players and the players do something spectacular and throw the energy right back at them and it was just an exchange and and so you know I I, I really do think you know I really do believe in my heart that that uh, fans energetic fans. Polite fans, <laughs> but you know, energetic fans really make a difference in in how their team performs. This team, as we were saying, is really fun to watch, and it's exciting to see great baseball again. They're very injured, right? So yeah. going, <laughs> oh, it's a tough one, right? You could yeah. only imagine, too, even yeah. being a manager, like to keep, lose your pitchers. And where do you go? Yeah, you're <laughs> where right. do you go? Yeah. So, can they win? Is it a 
whole new game when it comes to the playoffs. Can can they really go the miles with this yeah, team? You know what, Andrea? I, I yeah, I think so. Terry, in fact, first of all, Terry Francona does a great job. Him and his coach, Brad Mills and Alomar and and uh, you know Van Berkleyo and all these guys. Uh, Mickey Mickey uh, does well. Um, all these guys, you know, they're on top of things and they make good decisions. Um, the good thing about postseason is that you don't play every day. Mm -hmm. So if you have to, you can get by on a three-man rotation. And with the bullpen that they've got, you know, they get five innings out of their pitchers, out of their starter, and they go to the bullpen and, and either match up or, or go with, you know, go with the, you know, go with the, you know, a long guy and then and then match up at the end. You know, I think they have a tremendous chance to win. For me, the big, the big, the big question mark is which offense is going to show up. You know, are we going to show up with the team that hits the ball in the ballpark and scores a lot of runs, or are we going to show up with the, you know, with with the you know guys that strike out, don't put the ball in play, and don't do you know don't do the little things with the bat to score runs. You know, I I, um, I, I that's why I've been so impressed with uh, with uh, Ramirez this year, uh, how consistent he's been because he he takes what the pitcher gives him, and uh, and you know I I, I think that uh, that the pitching wise will be okay. It'll be a struggle. Pitching-wise, I think we'll be okay. Offensive-wise, I think that, that we've got enough good, experienced hitters in the lineup that, that they can lead the way and our younger guys will follow through. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. Can we win it? You bet. You bet we can. Is it going to be a cakewalk? Probably not, but then the postseason never is. Will you two be going to the playoff games? As long as they let us in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's exciting. It brings. We were just talking this morning about the memories it brings back of our playoffs because Mike played – 22 years of professional baseball before we ever went to a playoff game and it was in 95 <laughs> mm -hmm. but I remember the in 95 when we finally came home and we had lost but everybody there were probably 10,000 people at the airport waiting on us at three in the morning it was so exciting and uh, we got off the plane and Mike was being the gentleman that he is he said let me go first and I started going down that little jet thing and going oh my gosh look at all these people here and I felt so weird and, and so I turned around to tell Mike you need to go around and greet these people it's three o'clock in the morning I was going to mother him through this like I do everything and he just looked at me and said take my briefcase and put it on the bus he said I've got to go greet these people <laughs> <laughs> and the memory of that and you know and I thought this is as losers we're getting this kind of greeting and it was just, it's just fun that when you get through it, and I remember getting home and saying, okay, we're going to have a piece of toast with tomato on it. I just wanted something normal <laughs> and real down home, and it just felt good to get back in real life. Too late for chicken fried steaks. <laughs> <laughs> it might have sat on you. <laughs> yeah. What made you two, two Texans, decide to make Cleveland your home and stay here even after... Um, being let go yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, back in the 90s. <laughs> I went to, after I got let go, <laughs> a couple of days later, maybe a week later, I said, Sharon, I, I, do you do you want to move back home, back back to Texas? And uh, she said, well, do you? And I said, well, you know, yeah, it's home. And, and it's, you know, our, our families are there. And, and she said, well, you go ahead and move on back home. I'm going to stay here with the grandkids, and I'll write you every now and then let you know how we're doing. Did you say that? Yeah, dang right. And I say, well, sure, I understand that. Can I stay with you? <laughs> well, I just feel like we're so lucky that you're both still in Cleveland. Like, you've Can't just go. been <laughs> such a great addition to the Cleveland family. And I feel like this is, even though you still have the Texas accent, <laughs> I feel like this is still home and this is where you belong. Yeah. And you've just been great ambassadors for the city and you still do so much for it on so many levels. So I feel like we're lucky that okay. you're both here and that you decided that you very wisely decided <laughs> to stay <laughs> and yeah. tell him, man, what, this is I where just, I'm going to be. I spend each and every day just trying to keep him sure. <laughs> <laughs>